you want to enjoy happiness and success at work? Do you want to enjoy yourself while building your confidence and reaching your goals? Terry McDougall has helped thousands of high achieving professionals just like you to break through the blocks, regain their energy, and enjoy their careers again. Terry can help you enjoy more success and satisfaction in your current employment or finding your next opportunity in a new career. In her interview, Terry is going to show us how to take control of our professional destiny and to start enjoying it. Have you ever felt like giving up, quitting, throwing in the towel? Welcome to Never Ever Give Up Hope featuring Carol Graham. She's an author, health coach, and motivational speaker. Backed into a corner multiple times in her life, Carol shares with you stories on how she overcame some of the toughest obstacles a person can go through in life, but refused to give up hope. Rather than admit defeat, an opportunity was presented, and it involves each and every one of you. Carol will feature spectacular guests who will share their messages of hope, encouragement, and their inspiration to prove why life's adversities only make you stronger. And now, welcoming the host of the show, here's Carol Graham. Boyle McDougall is an executive and career coach and CEO of Terry B. McGoogle Coaching. She helps high-achieving professionals remove obstacles that keep them stuck so they can enjoy more success and satisfaction in their lives and careers. Are you interested? She is the author also of Winning the Game of Work, Career Happiness and Success on Your Own Terms. That's where she got my interest, right there. She is also the host of the Marketing Mambo podcast. Welcome, Terry, to Never Ever Give Up Hope. Thanks for having me, Carol. It's great to be here. Excellent. Well, we've got lots to talk about, so we'll dig right in. And my first question to you is this. Before becoming a coach as a longtime corporate marketing executive, what motivated you to change your career? You know, it's funny. I've been asked that question a lot, and, and every time I answer it, I, I get a better understanding of what my motivation was. Um, I think it really, honestly, I think I was always a coach deep down inside. I'm, I'm the oldest of four girls. And so I was the big sister. I was the person that was helping my younger siblings, you know, figuring out things and then helping other people to, to do better. I was like that at school. And then even when I got out of college, I would help other people with their resumes. And I just had an interest in figuring things out and helping other people be, um, you know, learn skills and so forth. Now, in my own career, I, when I got out of college, I was actually a first generation college graduate in my family. And I was very ambitious about uh, creating a career in the corporate world, but I didn't really have any role models or guides to help me. And so many of the lessons that I learned, I learned the hard way. Hmm. Um, and I did at a couple points in my career, hire coaches that helped me kind of make it to the next level in my career. And so I understood the value and what coaches actually did, executive and leadership coaches, what they actually did. And so I got to a point in my career, I'd been at, at my last uh, corporate job for, I was there for 12 years. And in the time that I was there, I had four different jobs. The last job that I had was not one that I wanted. <laughs> My okay. my boss said, I want you to take this job. I really tried to say no. And she said, I really want you in this job. And, you know, being the good corporate citizen that I was, I said, okay, I'll give it the old college try. And it just never really was a good fit. And so I was not very happy in that role. And it got me thinking about like, what is next for me? And I did with myself what I actually advise a lot of 
people that I work with to do, which is to, you know, do a little introspection and say, Mm -hmm. what am I good at? And what do I like to do? And is there a need for, for those things out in the marketplace? And, uh, as a, as a marketing leader, I always thought that it made a lot of sense to invest time and energy into people on my staff because, you know, they were more effective, they were happier. It made me look good because they were doing a good job. And I got feedback that I was good at coaching and mentoring. And so um, I decided to uh, leave that organization and pursue a certification in coaching. And so what I do today is I, I really mine those 30 years that I had in the corporate world. You know, I've had a lot of experiences. And when I'm working with people and they're telling me about things that they're experiencing, very often I've experienced something similar and I can use my coaching skills to help them figure out how they move forward towards, you know, the reality that they'd like to be experiencing in their uh, career and in their life. So basically you were coaching yourself without even realizing it. (laughs) Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think you're right. Now let's address the, those who are not currently satisfied in their career because I know this is one of the things that you talk a lot about on your website and it it really tweaked my interest you said that it could be because they're playing by the wrong rules I love that and I really want to know what you mean by that I'll I'll use myself as an example like I was a good student in school and if I did what the teacher said and you know studied and put the work in I would get rewarded for that And I kind of thought that if I got into the workplace and I just sort of did my job and I, you know, kept my head down and didn't make trouble and that I would advance within the the workplace. And it didn't take long to recognize that, you know, like, yeah, you can keep your job if you do that, but you're not really going to advance. You're not going to be looked at as like a leader if you just come in and, and do your job. But I couldn't figure out what are you supposed to do? to, to get ahead. And I would see people that in my eyes, I didn't think were really doing a good job. Like they weren't showing up to all the meetings or returning all of the emails or whatever, and they were getting promoted and I could not figure it out. Um, and, uh, it, it took a lot of observation and probably the biggest thing for me was I actually had a, a boss who was a great mentor to me and he kind of pulled back the curtain and started pointing out to me, what was really going on around me, you know, that I really started looking at um, the politics within the organization and understanding, you know, trying to understand what people's motivations were for operating in a, a certain way. And then importantly as well, you know, I think that a lot of times people are very focused on the tasks of their particular job. And they're like, hey, I showed up on time and I made the widgets you know, how come I'm not getting promoted? And I came across uh, something that as a coach, I came across something about how you add value in really um, any for-profit organization. There's only really three ways to add value. You're either going to help them make money, help them save money, or help them reduce risk, which in many ways is helping them save money as well. And when you like step back and start connecting what you do to how it supports one of those three um, value creators, that's when you start to understand the real game, the real rules of the game. Um, Because it's not, you know, whether you came in and you answered all the emails in your box. It's like, did you do something that had an impact for the organization? And, you know, I think that, you know, at the heart of it, those are, the real foundational rules of, you know, how, how you're, you become successful at work. But then there's a lot of, there's a lot of other things too, just about, um, you know, putting boundaries in place and, you know, uh, making sure that you understand what is expected of you and, you know, how you deliver on that. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of, <laughs> I could talk all day about all of I'm the different sure, things that I awesome. see. Um, but uh you know, I think that people a lot of times don't dig very, very far beneath the surface. And then they're very puzzled as to why they're not getting the results that they expect. But when you step back and 
you know, you kind of really look at the whole playing field and you can see how what you do interacts with the rest of the organization, you can start to understand how you can have uh, more impact. Now, my next question, you basically have answered it already, but I want to bring it a little more personal for the listener. And that is, how does your program different and why does it work? You know, I think that, um, you know, my, my program really has five things that I, I take into consideration with my um, clients. And the first thing is helping them get crystal clear on what their goals are. Because very often when they come to me, they know that there's some pain. You know, they know what uh-huh, they want to uh-huh. avoid, but they haven't flipped it to say it's not just about avoiding pain. It's really about going towards something that they think is going to be, you know, make them feel more satisfied. Um, so there's that. And then once they get clear on their goal, I work with them on developing a roadmap to get there. So like, what are the actual steps that they need to take to get there? Um, And then we will work on um, the skills because a lot of times, you know, they know that they need to get there, but maybe there's some gaps in their skill set. And so we will identify those and start to work on them. Um, I also address something that I call environments and what I break that into three parts. One is that I give them a safe place to talk about things that are stressful or chaotic, or, you know, maybe they really can't talk to anybody else about the things that are going on at work. Like, you know, if they're in a leadership position, they can't talk to their subordinates. Maybe their family is tired of hearing about it or they don't understand, or maybe it's going to stress them out. Um, So I give them that safe place. I also, um, so that's kind of the internal environment. The external environment is the goal setting and the taking action and being held accountable for moving, you know, with pace towards their, their goals. And then the third uh, environment area that I work on with them is understanding the uh, political environment at, at work. Um, And a lot of times that can be very puzzling. You Mm -hmm. know, people will be in a situation and they're like, what just happened? I don't really understand this. And so I help them make sense of that because once they can kind of look around and, you know, understand the players around them and then they know how to show up a little bit better. And then the last thing that I work with people on and I and honestly, besides getting clear on the goal, this last thing is really the most important thing I work with people on. And that is getting into a positive mindset um, because unless people believe that what they want is possible, it will not happen. And I have seen it time and again with my clients that it's very natural for people to come in sometimes and feel a little skeptical, feel a little, you know, uh, jaded or negative because they're trying to protect themselves from disappointment. But you know, maybe they've had bad experiences like, oh, I've applied for jobs and I never gotten them. So I don't think it's ever going to happen. But once they get into that mindset of like, you know what, I think that what I want is possible. I have seen some of my clients get the thing they want within weeks. Wow. Because it's really almost like they had blinders on and then they peel the blinders back and they start to see a lot more opportunities around them. And I think even attract opportunities in a way because they're open to it versus being sort of like, you know, closed off in a corner, you know, in a cave, (laughs) hiding, trying to protect themselves. That's a good Um, point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that um, my approach, I I know it works. And then I think the other thing that's um, a little different about me is that I've worked in the corporate world Uh for three years. So, you know, when people explain the situations, very likely I've either seen it or experienced it, uh, something similar. Um, so I don't, um, I don't think they're crazy or I'm not saying, oh my gosh, that's horrible. You know, <laughs> cause I've seen, I, I might still say, oh, that's horrible, but, um, <laughs> I've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of crazy things happen and I've seen a lot of puzzling, you know, things happen and, you know, I can help people navigate that. And you do this online, like people can connect with you there for Yeah. Yes. I work with people all over, you know, I I actually have international clients and I work with people 
um, all over the United States as well. Um, and I, I will meet with them either by phone or by Zoom, depending on what their preference is. Okay. All right. Now, you said something that really tweaked my interest and in that I'm sure that others would be interested as, in, as well. And that is that you had to break your addiction to external validation in order to be able to nurture your inner wisdom. Can you expound on that? Yes. So when I was writing my book, I came across this bit of research and um, that was done by a, a professor at Harvard Business School named Tom DeLong. He's actually written a book on high achievers. And he believes that high achievers are addicted to external validation. And I think that on a certain level, I already knew that because I knew myself. And um, But when I read that, just this huge light bulb went on over my head and I started looking at the types of clients I work with and I thought, oh my gosh, this explains so much and it makes so much sense as well. Because, you know, if I think back to, you know, starting school, even kindergarten or first grade, that, you know, when the teacher gave you a gold star on your worksheet, you wanted more of that. Right. And so you you started focusing more and more on like, what does the teacher expect of me? And for people that are high achievers, they're high achievers because that was a habit in their life. And usually what gets rewarded gets reinforced. Right. Mm, and so, excellent. you know, for somebody who is a good student, you know, they're focusing even more on like, what's the teacher expect? What do I need to do for this assignment when they, um, you know, get to. Um, when it's time to apply to colleges, they're looking at like, oh, what clubs do I need to be in? Or what, what do I need to get on my a SATs in order to get into this college? So they're really focusing on what's, what's expected of them externally. And what happens is that over time, we uh, delay gratification, right? So we might want to go out with our friends on Friday night to the party, but or Saturday night, but we're saying, oh, I have a physics test on Monday, so I better stay in and study, right? Like we're, we're right. putting off what we might want to do in this moment for future gratification. And what happens is that people keep doing that and it becomes such a habit that they in some ways sort of pave over that connection to their own inner desires and maybe even their own judgment that they're looking and saying, oh, well, you know, does my boss like this or not? Did he or she think I did a good job on this? Right. And it can often leave us vulnerable to um, manipulation or exploitation. And I see it a lot where, you know, maybe somebody's working for a boss that's not a great leader and that they know that this person you know, if they ask them to jump, that person will say, how high? Huh, and, uh -huh. you know, in today's workplace, we we all could pretty much work 24-7. You know, we can find something to do. But at some point, we have to say to ourselves, like, how much is enough, right? When When is something good enough? And in order for us to get to that point, we actually have to, like, you know, find that little wellspring of connection to our inner wisdom, you know, and, and a lot of times there's like a little trickle that comes out here and there, maybe we get excited about something. And we know that that's something that we like to do or something that we're good at. And we want to go towards it. But sometimes we also are like pulled away because, you know, our boss is telling us, you know, much like me at, my, at that job that, uh -huh. I said, I, maybe my inner wisdom was saying, that's not a good job for you. And I was trying to tell her that's not a good job. And she was saying, I want you to take it anyway. And I just acquiesced and I took it, even though I knew it wasn't a good job for me because I wanted to please my boss. I wanted to stay on her good side. And, um, you know, I overrode my own intuition and my own inner wisdom to do that. And it wasn't a good decision. Well, I suppose it was in the long run, but for for two or three years, it was very uncomfortable and I wasn't very happy. Um, but, uh, you know, when I finally did get back connected with who I really am and what I really like to do, I did find a more authentic path for myself. And certainly, you know, where I find myself today is 
I'm very, very happy and I feel like I'm doing what I was meant to do. But it took a bit of struggle to get there. And I'm sure you're not alone. And that's that's why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I really try to help people recognize that, you know, I, I actually will say to people, you know, when I first start working with them, I'll say, you know, well, what is it that you want? You know, what's your goal? And a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know what my goal is. Or they will say, this is what I really want, but here's the 10 reasons why I can't have it. <laughs> and I, I really try to encourage uh. people to say, like, look, it's good enough if you want it. We don't need to worry right now about how you're going to get it. Okay, just let it live. Let your dream live. Let it breathe. And we'll figure out together, you know, how you're going to get there. You know, these the, actually, if we go back to, you know, how I was talking about my five step um, approach to coaching, these are two separate steps. The first step is get clarity on the thing you want. What's your goal? And the second thing is, what's the roadmap to get there? But a lot of times people like put those together and uh -huh. because because they don't know what the roadmap is, they just, you know, they don't want to like stand by their dream of the thing that they want. But, you know, we can, I totally believe that, you know, we are all very, very capable. And if we really have a passion for something or something that we really want to do, we'll figure it out. I've, I've seen it happen again and again, how miraculous it is when people are like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to like have coffee with this person because they're doing something that I think is really right. interesting. And then, you know, that person connects them with a great opportunity or they give them some information that helps that person be more successful um, in their life or career. You know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, we all deserve to be happy and to use our gifts. I totally agree. And of course, can relate with personal experience because I am where I am in my career as a result of those things just coming into an alignment. And it's been an incredible journey and one that you love to sit back and, and replay and watch because you think, how in the world would I have ever gotten here without this happening? And it, that progression is exciting. So yes, I totally understand what you're saying. And we're going to take a 30 second break. And when we come back, I want you to talk about can you be a success professionally and still be happy and not stress to the max? So we're going to touch base on that. And also your book, which I know is going to, is exciting because it's going to help a lot of people answer a lot of these questions that you have presented and motivate them. Carol Graham would like to show you the path from misery to miraculous triumph in her fast-paced memoir, Battered Hope. She relates her determination to succeed as someone who experienced one horrendous nightmare after another. Gang raped and left for dead, loss of a child, husband falsely imprisoned, and cancer. Nothing could break her tenacity or faith. No matter what you face, heartache, loss, suffering or injustice, Carol will illustrate how she became a victor the same way you can. The secret is to never, ever give up hope. Order your copy at Amazon or batteredhope.blogspot.com. Shared so far has certainly been motivating and exciting, stimulating. I mean, all, all those words that mean, okay, I want to change. And I think that Many of us as career, as career people want that change and we want it smoother. And we also want to be happy during that, that time because very often you've heard, I'm sure you've heard this many times, where people who want to become a professional success feel that they have to sacrifice their personal happiness. So can you address that a little bit before we go on with your book, etc.? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I really think it's about energy. And it's also about things like boundaries. And going back to what I was saying earlier, getting in touch with your own inner wisdom, and understanding that you are innately valuable as you are, when we're looking for other people to validate us, that leaves us in a vulnerable position. No kidding. But if, <laughs> if we can validate ourselves, and if we can say to ourselves, no matter what is going on around us, you know what, I'm okay. 
Now, I'm not going to say that, like, you know, if you want to do a good job at work, that you can just ignore what's expected of you. Um, but I think that looking at it in the context of what's reasonable and also what you're willing to invest in your career. You know, I um, I look back over on my career and I'm uh, married and I have three kids and I work the whole time that I was raising my kids. And I very, very rarely brought my laptop home on the weekends. Excellent. And it did... It did not hurt my uh, career tra- trajectory. I was still able to to rise and and do well. And I think partly because when I had time with my family on the weekends, that it recharged my battery. And when I went to work on Monday, that you know I had new ideas and I had the energy to do my job. And balance, but I think, right? Yes, yes, balance and. I think for a lot of people, they maybe are a little bit afraid that if they're not giving 100%, 110%, you know, 24-7, that somebody's going to come along and say, you're not good enough. And, you know, there certainly are people within the corporate world that will use, you know, fear and coercion mm-hmm. as a way to try to you know, quote unquote, I don't consider it management, I I consider it more like manipulation, but to quote unquote, manage. And if we can say to ourselves, like, I see what's going on here, and I'm going to put a boundary in place. And this is what I believe I'm or this is what I'm willing to invest in this career. And hopefully it's going to be good enough. And the, the thing that I think is actually interesting is usually when we put a boundary in place, and that we feel confident about it, people usually will respect it. I I very rarely had people seriously challenge boundaries that I put in place in place for myself. But I also was delivering what was was asked of me, you know, I think sometimes when people don't have firm boundaries, and they know that like, I mean, I've seen it where somebody would be like, you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, and you know, you're out for a drink or you're at a conference with somebody and they're like, Oh, just email this person, they answer no matter what time it is. And there are certainly people like that. And I think that they thought that was a badge of honor. But in fact, it just meant that they didn't have good boundaries. And they probably were not having the balance that would maybe serve them better in their life and career. That's an excellent point. I'm glad that you brought that up. Now, I noticed on your website that you said that there was a difference between executive coaching and career coaching. Could you differentiate that simply, please? Yeah, um, executive coaching is what I refer to when I'm working with someone who's in a leadership position, and they're in role, and they want to be more effective in that role. So working with them to understand, okay, well, what are your goals in your job? And how can you, you know, deliver more on, or, you know, have more impact in the role. Um, And I typically am Uh, working with them to identify what I call the leverage points. Uh, You know, how do you get, you know, more impact out of the same or less energy? Um, And that, you know, could be skill development, it could be like I mentioned earlier, sort of shifting that mindset to more of a possibility, solutions oriented mindset. Career coaching, uh, to me is really helping someone who's in career transition. So somebody that Um, you know, sometimes it may be that they're at a crossroads, they're, they're employed, and they are starting to consider what they want to do next. And I'll work with them to, you know, kind of look at their skill sets and strengths and see if we can figure out how they can um, use those in a new situation. And then I'll also work with them on how do you develop an effective um, career transition strategy. And, you know, I work with them on things like uh, networking and interview skills and uh, looking back over their uh, previous experience to uh, communicate the value that they've provided to previous employers so that, you know, future employers would be uh, interested in them. That's like a one-stop shop. You know, you're really being able to help take somebody from point A to wherever they want to go. 
in mm -hmm. in this area and that's excellent you don't have to go to several different coaches in other words you're going to be able to walk them through and help them from wherever they are when they come to you and also where they want to go it's it's true I, i've actually worked with some clients through the whole cycle and i i didn't mention this but i, I maybe i did mention this earlier but sometimes people are at that crossroads that they're not sure they're not uh -huh. sure like is it that I could be better in the job I'm in, or is it really time to, to okay, leave? Good. And I would say that about 50% of the time when somebody's at the crossroads, if we, you know, maybe we work on their skill development and they actually are more effective at work and they fall back in love with their job, or, you know, we get some clarity around what's going on at work and they decide like, yeah, it's time to go. And now like, what's the next step for me to, you know, for that next uh, role. Wonderful. Now your book. Who should buy it? Is it a workbook? Tell us about it, whatever you want to share. Yeah, you know, so the book is for people who, you know, want to be successful. I mean, this is this is not about like, uh, sell all your belongings and, you know, go on a spiritual trek to India or anything like this. Like I'm somebody that enjoyed, you know, success in the corporate world. And the people that I work with enjoy that that's important to them as well. But I believe that it's possible to have that and also have plenty of time and space to enjoy your life and to show up, you know, as you are at work. And uh -huh. so the book, the book is really about helping people to look at themselves, understand their own strengths, understand what is important in the workplace and how to show up to have impact. Um, you know, you asked, is, is it a workbook? It has exercises at the end of each chapter on the topic of that chapter, you know, so helping people get clarity around goals or helping them understand, you know, how to navigate corporate politics. I also interviewed um, 11 people for the book about their careers. And part of the reason why I did this is because I know for a lot of people, and it could be at any time in their career, but sometimes we look at people that are more advanced or in leadership positions. And just, we can think that, oh, they just sort of like got on this magic escalator that just took them to the top and that they didn't really have to, you know, withstand any hardships. And I knew from just talking to people over the course of my career and uh, in different contexts, I had heard people's stories of how they got to where they were. And you know, you can look at somebody who's really successful and be like, oh, wow. But then when you talk to them and they're like, yeah, I got fired three times or, you know, I got I had to withstand, you know, sexual harassment or I had to, you know, I bounced around and did a lot of different things before I finally found the right path for myself. And I really wanted to share these stories to be inspirational for other people, you know, because sometimes what I'll see is that people are just like, you know, I guess this is good enough. Like I have a job. Why don't I just, you know, have it, you know, my, my parents are saying, well, what, you know, why are you unhappy? You have a good paying job. But a lot of times these jobs can be kind of soul sucking. And I believe that we can both have success and have happiness and authenticity. And so the book is for people that want that. And one of the messages, I believe, would be you don't have to settle. You don't. And I, I mean, I say this all the time that I believe that each of us is here on earth for a reason. And I think our mission here is to figure out what that is. And when you get closer and closer to, to the reason why you were given the gifts that you were given, you will find that you feel happier, that you feel like... Right things are easier, that you're in the flow, things don't have to be hard. You know, one other thing that I, I've i kind of come to this conclusion, a lot of times the reason why we do things is because we want to avoid other people's disappointment or other people's judgment or criticism. And what I realize is that nobody else really has the right to judge us. And if we, if we recognize that we're each here for our own unique reason. Maybe other people don't know what our reason for being is. And so if they don't know that, and then mm -hmm. where, why would they ever be able to judge us? 
you know, it, and so this, it goes back to what I was saying before, like when we step into that inner knowingness, that inner wisdom, our own, own intuition, and we, you know, follow that, that's where we really find happiness and satisfaction and and very often like incredible success as well on the interview page there is going to be a link to buy your book and also there's a blurb about it and one thing i did notice is that every review is a five-star review and i think that even though that's wonderful you know (laughs) A lot of people will look at that and go, wow, and they want the book. Well, I'm telling you, you need to, if you want to do any of these things that Terry is offering today, whether it be coaching or even reading her book and getting some clarity and some direction and help from her, she is going to be more than happy to connect with you through her book, but also through her website And I hope that you will do that. So I appreciate everything you shared today. I know there are many people who have a lot of thoughts that are are going through their mind of how they want this change. And maybe now this is the key to finding it. So thank you for everything you shared. Now tell us about your podcast. Oh, my podcast. I started it in January of this year. And it is just so fun. I love it. It's uh, called Marketing Mambo. And I think that we mentioned earlier that in my corporate career, I was in marketing. And uh, this started really with a conversation that I was having with one of my clients who's a marketing consultant. And we got off on sort of a tangent about marketing and intersection of marketing and technology, you know, kind of little arcane thing. But what I recognized was that I missed having those kind of conversations. And my client actually made a comment. She was like, oh, I love this conversation that we're having. I think this would make a great podcast episode. And when she said that, a light bulb just went on and I thought, well, why not? I've been on a lot of podcasts and I I really enjoyed being a guest, but I thought, well, how fun would it be for me to be the host and to tap into my network of a lot of people I know in marketing and be able to have these conversations about the marketing profession, a lot of the challenges, a lot of the new things that are going on, uh, you know, share uh, insights or bring experts on that I I think will uh, help people that either work in marketing or have an interest in marketing. Um, And it certainly has been, I mean, as you know, as a podcast host, it's just such a, a privilege to talk to so many different interesting people. And I, I absolutely love it. And um, what you learn from it is amazing, isn't it? So many it different really places is. and aspects of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. And I mean, I, I've i talked to people from literally all over the world. And it's, it's really fascinating to get the different perspectives. I love it. This has been really great. As I mentioned, I know that it is going to be the answer for many people who have been searching for someone like you that can help them. And so not just your book, but also I want people to tap into uh, your offers for uh, coaching, both executive and and career coaching, as you made that difference very clear, and I appreciate that. But also, is there anything that you would like to say to capsulize what you have shared today? I think that it deserves repeating that each of us deserves to be happy Mm -hmm. and it is absolutely okay to follow your heart and find that path to your authentic place on this earth. And I think that it is absolutely possible to have both success and happiness if you recognize that you're unique you have unique gifts, and you will make the world a better place when you step fully into that. Well, you said what I was trying to say. I appreciate it. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay, I believe that we have covered all the bases, and I look forward to sharing this online. I look forward to having people tap into what you are offering and also your book and thank you so much for what you shared today on never ever give up hope 
Thanks for having me, Carol. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for listening to Never Ever Give Up Hope featuring Carol Graham. Did you know that most people succeed because they are determined to? Quitting was never an option. Carol loves your comments and will respond to each one. So please subscribe and review this podcast. A rating of five stars would be outstanding and appreciated. Remember, if you are still here, there is always hope.